Welcome back everyone to our series on the New Testament. Let us begin in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, as we continue to look at your scriptures, at your holy word, how you've revealed yourself to us, help us to study more closely, pray with it continuously, that we may draw closer to you and to hear and heed your holy word. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today's video is going to be on the Synoptic Gospels. It's the first three books of the New Testament. They are the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But what does synoptic mean, and why do we put these three of the four Gospels together? Well, these three Gospels are called synoptic, which roughly means same eye or same lens. And though all three of these report a lot of the same sayings that Jesus used, just in different contexts, but it doesn't mean that these conflict, it actually means that Jesus was repeating a lot of what he said so that people would understand it. Because people couldn't just record something on their phones during that time or jot it down really quick, right? They had to remember it, so he was saying it frequently. For instance, he would take something very common to the Jewish people, like the Shema prayer, and he would quote it and then use it as part of a teaching. For instance, we see this with the Shema prayer. Jesus, in quoting Deuteronomy 6, this very familiar prayer to the Jewish people, uses it to give a teaching. And we see this in all three of the Synoptic Gospels. We see this in Matthew 22, 37. We see this in Luke chapter 10, verse 27. And we see this in Mark chapter 12. Now, though the situations may differ, the quote is still the same from the Shema prayer, from verses four and five of the Shema prayer, and it is still used as a way of Jesus teaching on the greatest commandment of the Old Testament, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your soul. And Jesus adds, in your neighbor as yourself. Now, in seeing how all of these three connect, there are also passages that are unique to each of the Gospels. Or there's something unique from the evangelist's point of view. All three record a lot of the same material while still having some unique material as well. Not to say that they all missed out on something of Jesus' life, but they recorded things differently under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So now let's look at some of those passages of the Synoptic Gospels, just to highlight th these three passages, which help with this overall theme for the week of the continual and progressive revelation that God gives us in the New Testament. And Jesus asked the fulfillment of the law. So first we look at Matthew 6, verses 5, 5 to 15, which is the Our Father. In this, Jesus reveals that we are to call God Father, not as he calls God Father, but we are also to call him Father, as we are his adopted children. It also means that in him telling us to call God Father, that God is the Father of Jesus. So it shows us in this Trinitarian relationship that there's a Father and a Son and we see in other scripture passages and here that Jesus is the begotten son. 
right? The beloved son of the father with whom he is well pleased. And we see this beautifully in this prayer, the Lord's Prayer. It's one we recite at every Mass. If you pray the Liturgy of the Hours every day, you pray this, the Our Father, at morning and evening prayer. It is an essential prayer to Christian devotion, to Christian life. The seven petitions of it help us ask God for specific needs. But this prayer beautifully illustrates this father-son, father-child dynamic. Next, we look at Mark 1, verses 1 to 3. And very specifically, Mark, in the beginning of his gospel, identifies Jesus as the Son of God. Which is very poignant because there are several points in Mark's gospel where after this big revelation or someone identifying Jesus as the Son of God or as the Christ, Jesus warns them not to tell anyone. And why is this? Because it all culminates on the cross. Later on, in chapter 15, verse 39, we get the centurion at the foot of the cross saying, truly, this, is, this was the Son of God. This poignant revelation comes at the start of the gospel. And we see over the course of the gospel how Jesus steadily reveals that. And we see just how important it is for a human to make that statement, to identify Jesus as the Son of God. In this, we see that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. This is very clearly seen in Matthew's genealogy, but Mark here as well. And even before talking about John the Baptist, Mark here is inviting us to consider that the only time that Jesus does not shun the claim of, son, of his sonship is after he has died on the cross, where a non-believer confesses that. Next, and lastly, we have the iconic passage from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. This passage is the Annunciation, recorded only in the Gospel of Luke. We see Mary's yes. What the Jews had waited hundreds of years for was now finally coming to them. In this, there is a beautiful quote by St. Bernard of Clairvaux, who, if you uh, pray the Office of Readings uh, for the fourth week of Advent, there's an excerpt of a homily he gave in which he talks about how all of creation waits patiently with bated breath to hear Mary's response. That we were waiting for her yes. In this revelation, this annunciation to Mary, we see that she conceives by the power of the Holy Spirit. So very quickly, very early on in these gospels, we see the revelation of the Trinity. Mary conceives by the Holy Spirit, bears the Son, and that is given to her as a gift from the Father on high. With the Annunciation to Mary, we see the revelation of God, how He desires to be close to us, how He desires our salvation, 
and how Mary's yes is what ultimately helps us in our redemption. For she freely accepted this, this task of being the mother of God, the Theotokos. In these three, three passages, the Our Father, the Annunciation, and the identifying of Jesus as the Son of God, we see how the New Testament is the fulfillment of God's revelation to us. These Gospels, these biographies of Christ's life, help us draw near to Him. As through the Our Father, we acknowledge that we are adoptive children of God. It is through Christ that we are able to do so. Which comes about because Mary's yes at the Annunciation. And we see very poignantly that Jesus is the Son of God, identified by a pagan centurion at the foot of the cross. All of this points us to Christ, gives us a deeper understanding of our faith, and allows us, most importantly, to draw closer to him who loves us unconditionally. So let us conclude in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all.